Russian down there. If you want to go to Oslo, no way. <laughs> uh, the next uh, is in March next year, six, seven March or something like that. I usually had it in February, but everybody complained it was so, so cold. <laughs> it was not, just nonsense. It's not cold in Norway. <laughs> okay. So, of course, we all want our dogs to live a happy, healthy life. Of course, we do. And we want to enjoy their company as long as possible into old age. So, and in trying to do so, we often do too much of everything and forget what dogs really need and want <coughs> to stay healthy. Sometimes we have to put the feet properly on the ground and see what's really, what's really necessary. So, uh, there are many aspects to this, and let's start with the first. When you're getting a dog, okay, we need to plan choosing the right breed. To get some knowledge about the dog's bodies, that's another thing, and make a plan to build up the body and soul for a, he a healthy life. Making a plan before you get the dog. It's really important. Uh, let's look at choosing the right breed. I find that during the years when people have come to me with a lot of problems, at least 90% of the problems occur because people have no idea about the breed they got. They chose a breed by face factor. Oh, he was so cute, I couldn't leave him. <laughs> and I like that face, oh, I think they're so cute. Oh, hello. Anybody can be cute when there are small babies. <laughs> and most of us are not so cute when we grow up. <laughs> uh, so, Getting a little knowledge about the breed is important because, yes, they are all born with the same <coughs> skills, of course, the survival instincts and all that. But for many years, a lot of dogs have been bred for some specific work, tasks, and that's also very strong in them. They have been selected for special skills, which they are really skilled at, and it's also a part of their personality. <coughs> so, we need to know that breed that I love so much to face of. What work was that dog bred to do? If that was guarding, do I really want a guarding dog in my garden? Um, maybe not so smart. I've had some cases that's been really completely stupid that way. Getting a, 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 a dog, a guarding dog, in a situation where they couldn't help the dog. That's so stupid. We need to know what the dog was bred to do. Guarding, herding, hunting. Actually the herding dogs are the worst hunters of them all. Uh, the herding itself was built upon their extreme hunting instincts. So, if you get a collie, surprise, surprise, if he starts to run after bicycles and joggers, uh, you can only expect it to happen, if you let it happen. You have to think about the breed. You have to do research on the breed to know what you are getting. If you have several small kids in the house, don't get a corgi. Because corgis run after and nip their legs when they run around. That's what they do. They are not aggressive. 
That's a work they were chosen to do. And they will do it. I know numerous of corgis that have been put down because they were nipping the heels of the kids. They should have put down the parents instead. Yeah. They made the choice. So you have to think a little about the face factor is completely unimportant. If the dog looks at you with that appealing face, <coughs> that is not the important. Different breeds, different individuals and problems. If you get a cute and pretty Icelandic dog, you buy barking. Because barking is part of their job. They, they wanted dogs to bark on the farms in Iceland. Because they wanted the dog to tell them that there was somebody coming down the road. Living in isolated places, they needed that. So why get an Icelandic dog and put him in a little garden in, in a city? Totally, completely silly. Get another dog. There are numerous dogs just as pretty. <coughs> and of course you have the hounds, Vintunda or what you call them. They, they also have their ideas about things. They need to run a little every day. If they get a couple of hundred meters running, they can be in the sofa most of the time. They are not meant for walking. They are not built for walking. They are built for a little running and then they're happy. Then we have the big guarding dogs. They will guard. You have all these big uh, uh, herding mountain guarding dogs. They will guard. And don't you try to, to, to tell yourself that this will not happen, my dog. Oh yes, it will. At the age of three, when they mature, they start guarding. And that's why most of Europe is full of Maremmas and Kangas and all these, uh, all these big guarding dogs. Because at the age of three, people get scared of them. And then they live the rest of their lives and die in shelters because they have the rumor about them that they are dangerous. They are not. It's the most pacifying sweet dogs on earth. But they have a job. In their head, it's necessary for them to guard. I met a flock of sheep and two maremmas in the mountains once. The sheep were walking around, a 